baseball at its best. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Detroit Tigers. Major League Baseball, only on 2K Sports. Fans have been packing this yard since it opened. This is Comerica Park, the home of the Tigers. The American League Central rivalry, it's Detroit and Chicago. The Tigers looking to win at home. I'm Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Kruk with me. Major League Baseball, 2K Sports. We've got Armando Galarraga, the starting pitcher. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Well, a tough matchup for this right-hander on the mound against this lineup. So he's going to have to really overachieve a bit today and really execute his pitches and elevate. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. But and it's Johnny Damon now. That well, was the White Sox taking the win yesterday. That made it two for three after trading games one and two of the three games set against the Royals in Kansas City. And this ball club is really, really swung on, hit. Wow, that was close. Right back up the middle, almost got him. That was a good time to take a quick look how the Tigers line up defensively. So, Steve, any individual standout? Alexi. Well, Gerald Larry behind the plate can really cut down the running game. He has that unique three-finger grip when he throws the ball to try to cut down runners. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Well, Gary, they're going to have to be very careful with the runner at first base. He can run. They may call a pitch out. They may have to throw over a couple times just to keep him close. A swing and a miss. Ramirez, strike one. Hoping to try to continue some momentum off of his last game when he picked up three base hits. See if he can't keep it going. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Ramirez will foul that one away. Well hit towards the middle. He grabs it. There's one. And they get two. Great double play. A beautiful looking double play right there. A pitcher's best friend. And that shortens the inning, shortens the number of pitches that have to be thrown. It's all about defense. And it's Paul Canerco now. The pitch hit sharply towards the hole. Yeah, with two down, they've got a man on board. Carlos Quinton up the plate with two away. Now, if they didn't get a chance to see his last game, he picked up a couple of RBIs in that one. Swing of the bat. Hot shot towards the hole. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Now, now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season White so Sox. far, let's see how he Second stacks up compared to everybody else. 15. First in batting Oregon. average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine, leading the league in hits right now, swinging the bat while every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. And Beckham's in the box. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Line towards second. And another one. It's contagious. And Canerco will score. Now batting for the Chicago well, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get Alex this guy. Rios. He needs an out. Here's Alex Rios now. RBI chance. Uh, Steve, they needed to take the lead, and they've come through just as we thought they might. See how this plays out. Well, they've staked out an early lead in this one, just where they want to be. Well, you know, when you hit like this in the first inning, you start to anticipate maybe a healthy bit of run support coming in this game. The pitch. Strike two. Galarraga now in control. Let's see how he uses these pitches. Oh, Gary, they're taking advantage of some early pitching mistakes. You have Back up the middle. Nice way to get things started. The White Sox have the lead. One to nothing. And uh, we'll get to see Jake Peavy pitching. He's going to start for Chicago. Dave, what do you think? What's he thinking about looking at this Detroit hitter lineup? Well, as a hitter, you take a look. You know you're facing Jake Peavy in this one. And, you know, you've got some concern because he has that explosive fastball and then that nasty slider. Peavy gets so many ground ball outs and keeps the ball in the ballpark. As a hitter, you want to try to get him to elevate his pitches and hit a mistake. 
At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And in, swings and misses at that one. That evens up the count. Detroit coming in off a loss in their last one. They were hoping to take the series after splitting games one and two. They ended up grabbing lined right at the second baseman. Beckham able to pull that one in. Take a look at Jimmy Leland's lineup. This is brought to you by Pepsi. John, who do we keep an eye on? But take a look at Brandon Edge in this game here today. You want to see a guy who's slight of stature, five foot eleven, just barely under 190 pounds, but he can hit it a long way. When it hits a barrel of the bat, he can send it as far as anyone in all of baseball. He provides some excitement for the fans. And it's Carlos Guillen in the box now. He has one hit, 12 at bats, not much light time against Peavy. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. Miguel Cabrera. Well, he stayed behind the ball right there real well. Got himself that one out base hit. Cutter just misses. One and all. Oh. Miguel Cabrera is the guy that when other teams come into play, he is the one that you tell, look, don't let this guy beat us. Problem is, more than likely, he's going to beat you. Cabrera will foul that one away for Miguel Cabrera. He has to wonder himself, how good can I be, and can I maintain consistently the numbers I've put up so far? In 2009, he took a big step toward how good he could be. He lost a lot of weight. He kept the weight off during the season, and he really worked hard at first base, a position that they're finally going to leave him at, and that's going to prolong his career. Two outs and in the box, Maglio Ordonez. strike and PB's got him on one I don't think he liked that call very much but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week that's a great pitch up the middle PB and he throws on to first that'll retire the side so Jake PB holding it down works his way out of the first inning without allowing anyone to score and it'll be the white side it's going to be Przinski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. AJ Przinski. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0 and 1. And that's a strike. A.J. Przinski now behind in the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Uh, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So, got to be seeing the ball pretty well. He stops at second. That will be a double. He's in scoring position now with nobody out. Well, these kind of hits right here, a double with no outs to start an inning, really puts the pitcher at a disadvantage and puts a lot of added pressure on that pitcher. Now a single can bring home a run. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. A line drive towards short. And that'll set down Tian. Here's what's next for the Tigers. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. A road trip. They'll match up with the Athletics. Great series there. That's Wednesday and Thursday. Then they'll be off to take on the Dodgers and Russell Martin. That'll be a challenging set of games for sure. And that's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. Fantastic chance here. Oh, this is great patience at the plate. He lets the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. And Pierzynski comes in. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Alexi Ramirez. Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in his swing to get that low ball to be able to pick up the hit. And this is swung on, lifted to deep right field. Now, here comes the runner for the plate. 
The throw, and that will bring a run in. Well, good piece of hitting. He wanted to advance the runner. He got the ball up in the zone, got it in the air, and the runner advances. That pitch was up in the zone, and he got underneath it and drove it far enough to move that runner. Now, he would have liked to hit, but it was a productive out. And Paul Canerco to bat. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Head up the middle. Now we have a look at the league leaders for the best on base percentage. The table setters brought to you by State Farm. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach, and these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's the league leader in hits. Sinker swung on, missed 0 and 1. Hit hard to second. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Swung on, that is hit. Whoa, get out of the way of that one. Straight back up the middle. And Damon crosses the plate. And Conurco also home. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rio. Well, anytime your pitcher gives up 10 hits, there's a pretty good chance he doesn't have a lot going for him in the game. And I think if I'm the manager, I'm going to head out there and bring the hook with me. And Alex Rios hits sharply towards the hole. Gets through. That run's going to score. Coming to bat for the Chicago White Sox. Another game, another hit. That's 20 games now with which he's had a hit. What an impressive streak. Two down. Runners at first and second. Here's the first pitch. Oh, Swung on and missed 0 and 1. He hit 333 last year against the Tigers here at Comerica Park. Inge. Throw on to second base. Force play. Side retired. Boy, a manager loves to see this. They strike for an enormous inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Five, six, seven hitters to get things started. It's Rayburn at the plate. Center fielder, number 25, Brian Rayburn. And there's ball one. Now, if you got a chance to see the last game, you saw he seemed a little bit flustered at the plate, expanding the strike zone, striking out twice in that game. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And Quinton pulls it in. Let's take a chance now and take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. It's going to be Santiago now. Damon able to pull that one in. That's two gone. Larish at the plate. Base is empty with two outs. Swung on and fouled away. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. 0-1 as a slider for a called strike. Well, this is a tough pitch. I mean, that breaking ball up and in really can handcuff a hitter. And he lays off there, one and two. Slider swung on and missed. Struck him out. That's going to retire the side. Three up, three down this half inning. Still unable to score. Detroit's still nothing on the board. 
it is. We're at Comerica well, Park and enjoying this great evening base. along with you with Major Number League Baseball. Mark Tien. First one to Tien. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air to left center. Guillen will field as he gets to it for the up. State Farm brings you the teams leading the way offensively over the last 10 games. The White Sox number one, the Red Sox second, Blue Jays third, the Indians fourth, and the Mariners fifth. Swing and a line at a right center. This one into the gap, rolling towards the wall. And the throw, he's going to try for three. Out of third as they tag him. And it's Johnny Damon. Ace is empty and two down. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. Well, that's a great pitch right there. That hard sinker, he just can't catch up. Strike two. Galarraga now in control. Let's see how he uses these pitchers. There's a swing and a ball hit deep to right field. Still going back. Out of here. Goodbye home run. Remarkable. They now lead by seven with that solo shot. Gets the call to come in and take the baseball as they make the pitching swap. Well, this is the right move. You had to get the starter out of there, Gary. I mean, he didn't have his good stuff today, but now the bullpen's going to have to step up and see if they can't come back in the game. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Well, working on the 0-1 count now. Sometimes we talk about poor pitch shot back to first, and that's going to do it. Cabrera's there. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. Tigers need to find some big time offense and soon. Third inning. Jimmy Leland looking on. This has been a test Number here eight. today for him and Gerald his team. Mayer. On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Retiring Lair. Number four. And it's Everett batting. And that misses 1 and 0. If you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Damon comes up with it and is trying. Oh, Gary, he's pitching well right now. That's seven straight that he's retired. He is really locked in. And in settles in for the first pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball. Damon. That's caught. Side is retired. Well, how about that? Only needed four pitches to set down the guys. Tremendous. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. That contributed offensively in their last game with a couple of RBIs. See if he can't do it again today. He delivers. Lined hard down the left field line. And he gets it down. That's his third hit. Three for three. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Brief moment to see who's on top on our State Farm League leaderboard in hits. Leading the MLB in batting average. Runner on first base. Nobody out. First pitch to Quinton. And that's by him on one. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. Swing and a miss. He's in the hole. Two strikes. Well, they're taking advantage of the opportunity so far in this game. Just blowing them out here. and Now getting more men on base again. So this offense has been relentless. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Now coming to bat. 
Well, you're talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. And Beckham's in the box. 227, the average last year against the Tigers in Detroit. First pitch on the way. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Had a real strong offensive game last time out. Three big base hits. Swing and a shot to third. One. And that's two. A double play. Now coming to back here, we talk a lot about how important defense is to a team's success. That's living proof right there. And you keep this one in mind because it's an inning offensively that didn't happen. With a runner on second, Alex Rios up. And one of the top ten averages right now. Here's the pitch. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. You're out. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. White's. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crunk bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. First pitch, A.B. begins to Gian. Called strike, and P.B.'s got him 0-1. Well, Gary, they really can't seem to mount any offense at all. I mean, one hit through four innings, and, you know, you really have to look at your approach at the plate. Swing and a miss. Look for the pitcher to try to expand the strike zone here. The hitter has to swing at anything close. That one's line softly towards the gap left center. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. Guillen keeps running. He'll hold there at second base. Credit him with a double. 0-2 oh, count. So you protect a pitch that's up. So a little easier to do that. Absolutely. You can fight it off. Punch it over the infielder's head. That time, solid piece of hitting. And here's Miguel Cabrera. And frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. And Peavy with a 1-0 delivery. Ooh, no bend on that bender, and it's 2-0. Now well, the hitter didn't take the bait. That's a great pitch, that breaking ball down in the way, trying to get the hitter to chase. You have to give him credit. He didn't go out of the zone for it. Comes up empty there, 2-1. and one. He's ready now, the 2-1. Now swing and a shot towards second. So Cabrera is set down. Now brought to you by State Farm, the pitching staffs who are making hitters earn their way. The White Sox, number one. Blue Jays in second. Third, the Rays. The Twins, fourth. Number five, the Royals rounded out. It really speaks to the philosophy of the organization when you have the fewest walks given up. They understand they need to throw strikes and let the opposition put the ball in play and trust the defense. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And Guillen comes in to score. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. It's Rayburn at the plate. Well, it's a little action. Look, it's headed in the right direction. It's just a long road to hold. Uh, Gary, that last at bat's exactly what the doctor ordered. You can't hit a five-run homer. Take what they give you, take advantage of the opportunities, and slowly get yourself back into the game. There's one swung on and missed. And Steve, the best uh, part of this for them is they've still got plenty of innings to go with. Well, that's right. And they've got momentum on their side now as well. The bats are starting to heat up. Let's see if they can do some more talking here. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. There's a swing, a little flare to shallow left. Fantastic chance here. It's going to be Santiago now. Santiago. First pitch on the way. Swung ground ball to short. It's scooped up. In time for the up. Look, here, I was thinking double play when that ball was hit. I thought they had a shot at getting it. They end up getting one out, but now a base hit could score two. Called strike, and PB's got him on one. The pitch. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. And Detroit should pick one up. Now coming to bat. 
Well, this is a guy that usually struggles with pitches in and around the knees, but he was able to just drop the bat head on it. Got a good piece of wood on it. A quality big league at bat. And the first pitch, Peavy misses. He's out of the zone down low. We're moving a little bit closer right now, Gary. It's what they need to do. They're going to try to come back in this game, get base runners on, and they picked up two. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. And there's the third out. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. Tigers really battling here to get into this game. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. One for two in the ballgame. Number 12, A.J. Krasinski. Here's the delivery. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. He's got a 296 career batting average against the Tigers. This ball is hammered deep right. That one, a one hopper off the wall. Krasinski's going to go for it. Pulls into second with that double, so he's in scoring position now with nobody out. Well, this could be a start of a great inning for these guys. You like to swing on this, and good hustle also to get to second base. Now, still three outs to go with the man in scoring position. And Rayburn didn't have Berzinski towards third base. The Central Division race is starting to take shape. Let's take a look at the State Farm standings board. It's the White Sox in first. Twins in the second spot. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. Played by Everett. Over to Cabrera. Two away. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI. He homered earlier in the ballgame. Well, they find themselves ahead in this one, and obviously two big at-bats from him so far in the game, driving in a run with a base hit, and then the home run driving the ball out of the ballpark. So getting his pitches and doing some damage. That one is in there and should score Pierzynski. And Pierzynski comes in. Damon heads for third. Safe at third, great hustle. Stepping up to the plate. But you talk but about a guy who's just White wearing Sox. out the Short opposition. That's a four-hit day for Alexi him. He is locked Ramirez. in. Runner standing at third. Here's Alexei Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. That gets through. The runner's going to come in to score. Stepping up to the plate. Well, he had three big Chicago hits in the last White game, and that was on the winning side. And he's getting them going Paul again with that at bat. Now, Paul Canerco batting with a runner on first. This is a potent offense on the field right now, really dominating. Well, that might just about do it, Gary. I mean, that last hit, I mean, right now, this lineup's on fire. It's a huge lead. We're in the middle inning. It's going to be awfully tough for them to catch up. Lined hard deep down the right field side. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. There's the throw. And not stopping there. He's going for it. And with this break in the action, let's take a look at the leaders in slugging brought to you by State Farm. Well, this is a list of guys that when they get in there, they're looking to do some damage to really hurt the opposition. Looking to drive the ball. It's not just about contact. It's about hard contact. Here's Carlos Quentin with two outs and two on. Headed for the middle. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. He throws. And Conurco also home. And he's aboard. And got there with a two-run single. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Well, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches, or they're just figuring him out. Oh. Slider, too far inside. That'll back him away a little. Oftentimes, a pitch like this, in on the plate, backing the hitter up, is a setup pitch for the next one to go away. Let's see if he throws it there. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Hit in the air to center field. And Rayburn's there to retire the side. 
Big offensive inning. Five base hits and four runs. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And it's Everett batting. 0 for 1 thus far. Number 4, Adam Everett. And here's the first one. And there's a called strike. Now going to try to make some contact in this ball game today because he swung and missed a little bit too much, striking out twice in his last game. And this is hit in the air, foul down the left field line. One away now. Hardest hit to accomplish in baseball, our State Farm leaderboard. Most triples in the league. I'll tell you what, speed puts so much pressure on the defense, and these guys can certainly do that as they force the other team to quickly make decisions and make plays and try to shut down a running game. And Brandon Inge at the plate. Well, 2009, Brandon Inge played in 161 games. He had some good power numbers, though, with those 27 home runs, but he only hit 230. Swing and a rocket toward short. And Ramirez fields the ball. And Inge is retiring. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. The series with Detroit concluding tomorrow. Then they'll be going against Torrey Hutter and the Angels. Another team at the top of their respective division. That'll be a two-game home series. Then they stay home for the next series, the Florida Marlins. So quite a few home games they'll be looking to capitalize. And it's Carlos Guillen in the box now. One hit, six ABs last season against Peavy. Ball. First pitch is a cutter that drops low, 1-0. He deals. Swung on and ripped towards second. Out. Throws to first side is retired. Three up, three down for Jake Beebe. Pitching deep into the ball game and uh, a look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. Top five AL and run scored. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. He strikes out Alex okay. Rios on a swing and a miss. At 86 miles per hour and as flat as that, pretty dangerous AJ pitch right there. Good job of keeping him guessing by changing speeds out there. And boy, John, you saw the effect of that, that swing. He wasn't even in the same time zone. But well, going from off speed to a heater like that is never easy, and even guys that make the big bucks have a hard time adjusting. And so Pierzynski retired. And in the batter's box, it's Tian. Have you got a chance to see the last game? You realize nobody had an answer to get him out. Everything they threw up there, he picked up a hit with four base hits. Here's a swing and a broken bat line drive. Throws on to first side is retired. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. Six inning base. And here's Miguel Cabrera to lead it off. Number 24, Miguel Cabrera. And he starts Cabrera out. Called strike. And PB's got him on one. He let that four-seam fastball go up and in in the zone. It's up in his eyes. You can see it well. He just couldn't pull the trigger. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And it falls in there. That's going to be a single. That's going to bring Maglio Ordonez up. Number 30. Well, a good piece of hit right there. And anytime you get your first hitter of the inning on base, it could set up the potential for a big inning. Can't connect. It's all in one. Well, if you saw his last game, you got a chance to see that he swung the bat well in that one, picking up a couple of knocks. Here's the delivery. On the ground to second. Up with it. Over to second for one. And there's the second out of double play. That Keystone area can get a little rough, Steve. Nice turn on the double play. Just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. It's Rayburn at the plate. And he gets them walked a lot. The American League has him in the top five. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swing, and that's going to be hit behind the plate. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. 
So no runs on one hit and nobody left on at the end of the sixth inning. Here's your manager, Jim Leland. The thoughts of a manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you've got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. Hit sharply towards the hole, and it gets through. That's his third hit of the game, four times up. And that'll bring Johnny Damon to the plate. But just what his team needed, he continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. No one out and a runner on first. First pitch on the way to Damon. Damon will file that one away. Now Laird sets the target. Hit hard on the ground towards third. That's one out. On to first. Safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Players with the most extra base hits around the league. It's courtesy of State Farm. Alexi Ramirez. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. He singled his last trip. Uh, the couple of RBIs, major factors as to why they have a lead here, Gary. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. And he gets this one by him, 0 1. And Alexei Ramirez was a guy who struggled in the first half of the season for the Chicago. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And that one's through for a base hit. Second hit in the game, 500 today. Another young star and Alexei Ramirez came out of the uh, Cuban National Baseball Program. Obviously they have to defect to get to Major League Baseball. When any time a team is going to build and build for the future you want young players and you want young players up the middle and that's what Alexei Ramirez gives the Chicago White Sox. Two away and the runners will have to hold that first and second. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. So Carlos Quinton comes up here with two runners on. He had a two run single in his last appearance. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs and a major factor in this offense. On the way. Great Swings ball. on that first pitch. Misses the fastball. 0 and 1. Well, I mean, listen, they, they don't have great chances as it is trailing by this much in the game. But if they give up another couple base hits right here, they've got no chance. So two outs, find an out somewhere. Swung on, line to right field. And that will end the half inning as Ordonez makes the play. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. Time to stretch it out in Motown. Looking to the lineup, six, seven, eight hitters on their way to the plate. It's going to be Santiago now. He'll start the home half of the seventh. Number 39, Ramon Santiago. And the first pitch. Great that time he squares as if to bunt. Misses 0-1. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Slider locked him up. He's behind 0-2. The hitter has to be protective. He has to be able to fight off that tough pitch and put it in play for a base hit if he can. Still 0 and 2. Swung on, hit in the air to right center, and it's through. That's a base hit. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. A perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. Keep that in mind. Next time around, we'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. The first pitch. Ball. The pitch from Peavy. Too high for a ball. One no pitch. That's the cutter in there. One one. Well, outstanding movement on the cut fastball, but he left it out over the heart of the plate. He got away with one right there. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's one and two now. The one-two pitch. 
Got him. One away. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. One out man on first. First pitch. Here it comes. Called strike. And Phoebe's got him on one. Okay, oh, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. Hit up the middle. He picks it up. Retiring Laird. Now, now Gary, he had play. thoughts about Number wheeling and going to second base right there, but instead Number just four. went to first to get the shirt out. Two outs and a runner on second. First pitch to him. Nope, that one not in there. Peavy missing. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and you know they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. 1-0 pitch, a slider in there. What a one. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. The one two on its way. The slider swung out and missed. Struck him out. Side gone. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. The White Sox still ahead. And Beckham's in the box. Second baseman, number 15, Gordon Beckham. First pitch, here it comes. He's wishing he laid off that one, a strike on a pitch in the dirt. He delivers. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. Well, KCAM's going to show us the four seam fastball here. Alex. I think the pitcher had him fooled on this one all the way through, John. He wasn't expecting that outside corner delivery. Well, he just pulled the string on that pitch, and that's good, good stuff right there. Here's the delivery. Strike Swing one. and a miss. Strike one. Strike that's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, he gets the breaking ball right over the heart of the plate. He must have been looking for something else. A smash towards the hole. Now That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. A look at the staffs who have been sitting batters down over the last ten. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the Red Sox. The Mariners in second. In third, the Tigers. Yankees, fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. You see the, the prodigious strikeout numbers for these teams, and they have power stuff. Really, the whole depth of the team. They get a lot of swings and misses, and that's a manager's best friend. Fouled off. Foul. Here's the pitch. Foul. It's fouled off. Hot shot towards the hole, and it gets through. He's had the swing going today on base three out of five. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. And the first pitch hit sharply down the line, and another hit back to back. And Rios comes in. Now batting. It doesn't matter who's on the mound or what they're throwing. These guys can hit it. They are just together building confidence and whacking at it. Out on the mound, we will see Phil Cope as the Tigers decide to bring in a reliever. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, Phil Coke is your typical left-handed reliever. He can pitch anywhere in the game. He can give you multiple innings if you need it. Fastball is an average fastball, 92 to 94 miles an hour, slider in the low 80s. But what you like about Phil Cook is he's very aggressive. He's going to come after you. 
It's not going to walk a lot of guys. You're going to have to put it in play, and that's what you like when you have a reliever coming out of the pen. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out in the inning. You know, what I like about this is that 0-2, he didn't mess around. He didn't try to nibble to get him chase off the plate. He goes right at him and just gets the strikeout. First pitch on the way to Damon. Fastball swung on a miss, still in one. You don't get the same kind of movement on the two-seam fastball when you throw it up in the zone because your hand's not on top of the ball. But that little bit of movement he was able to garner was just enough as he throws that up and in. Swung on and missed strike two. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right yeah. now. Johnny Damon on a swing and a miss. That's going to be strike three. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. White Sox continue to run away with it. Taking a count of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. And in settles in for the first pitch. Ground ball to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. And Inge is retired. And Guillen's batting. Grounded out his last time up. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swung on and missed. Strike one. You know, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth oh. inning and not leave it all to the ninth. And Carlos Guillen looks at that one for a ball. That'll even it up. Right. Swing and a miss in the slider. One and two. Pretty good pitch right there. He's teasing him just barely in the strike zone. Looks like it might break down for a ball, but it stays right there. By the time you recognize, too late to put a good swing on it, and you swing and miss. One-two pitch coming. The end battling here with another foul ball. Well, anytime you're behind in the count, you just want to try to spread out and try to put the ball in play. And that's what he did. Swung on and a ground to the first. And through for a base hit. He's now three for four. Good day. That will bring Miguel Cabrera up. Well, this sort of at bat right here, when you give up a hit after that many pitches, this is one of these things that could really rattle the pitcher. You have to be careful as a pitching coach. You don't let this inning get out of hand. And that's in for a strike. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in. For a strike. strike. Strike two. PB dominating in this AB. He's got some pitches to play with. At the belt, PB kicks and throws. Cabrera will foul that one away. Another foul ball. Cabrera in this at bat working hard. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The fact that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. Swing, soft liner towards left center. And he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. So that's going to put Maglio Ordonez at the plate. This could be demoralizing for the pitcher. You have an at bat that goes that long and you think you had him a couple times and he fouled off some tough pitches and he ends up getting that base hit. He really has to refocus himself and settle down. Well, anyway, you look at it. You can look at the stats all you want. You look at a 310 batting average, but you ask Maglio Ordonez what kind of year he had in 2009 and he would say on the ground to short and he's got it and there's one and two double play. So they pick up a couple of hits in the inning but do not score. And it'll be the White Sox. It'll be batters two through four do up next. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Number 10, Alexi Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing. So interesting move. And that's by him 0-1. Well, I tell you what, for a two-seam fastball, he had some good movement. Swing, hot shot. Oh, mercy. Boy, that did not miss him by much, but he got out of the way. 
Coming and that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, Alexei Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third in doubles, fourth in hits. Uh, he, you notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. Runner on first. And he starts Canerco out. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out, that two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch strike the plate. One. Good eye by the hitter. Swing and a miss. Canerco not making contact. That'll even up the count. Get a little extra giddy up on that right one two. as he just blows it right by him. The one-two pitch. A line drive towards the hole. And Inge gloves that one. Every ball club's got to have some power. Let's check out the league's top home run hitters brought to you by State Fire. Well, real treat here. Two of the biggest bats in baseball in one place and in one game. They can make the ball disappear like nobody else around. Pitch on the way. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. He went 0 for 1 last year up the middle. And Quentin's got himself a base hit. Coming to and that is hit number five in this ball game for him. Have a day, young man. And Beckham's in the box. Two hits, five trips to the plate for him. Well, big production offensively with three RBIs in this one, and then uh, making some plays, flashing the leather defensively, Gary. Runners on first and second with one out. First pitch. That one goes foul. He deals. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. The hitter now needs to protect the plate. Think about going right back up the middle. Line shot into center field. Out number two. And they'll try and hold the runners second and first. They stay. I mean the back for the Chicago White Sox. Center fielder. So Alex 51. Rios, he'll try and keep Alex it going. He had a single in his last time up. And he starts Rios out. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0 and 1. Here's a look at the matchup numbers. 3-0-1 off Detroit. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. The pitch. That one lofted in the air. Oh. It is foul. Detroit. Hit in the air to left center. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. And Ramirez is home. Ramirez around third. Headed for the plate. And Quinton scores too. Coming to bat. And he'll the stop Chicago at second base. That'll be a two-run double. AJ Krasinski. Well, that big lead just got a little bit bigger, and I have to think this one's just about over. Here's the first pitch. Strike Swings one. a little late that time. Strike one. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Head up the middle, and Ever dives. He's up with it. And the throw's in time at first. Mercy, what a play. They pick up two, three hits, strand a man. White Sox continue. The veteran manager, Jim Leland. Better kind of feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe, maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. The first pitch. Jenks finds the zone. That'll be a strike. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's one and two. A fastball up in the zone like that. A pitch a lot of guys like to hit. He just couldn't swing the bat. 
Here it comes. Oh. Line drive. That's foul towards first. There's a swing and a line drive. And that'll put Rayburn on first. He's going to try and test him here. And this rolls all the way to the wall. He's not stopping there. He's on his way to third. Not even close to third base. He makes it there and Coming dusts himself off. For the Detroit Tigers. Right, he takes this one-two pitch down in the Number zone. 30. He's able to go down and get Ramon, it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit. When you're behind in the count, you just want contact. And he got it. And the first pitch. And that swung on and hit. Rios. Here comes Rayburn for the dish. He gets tagged out right at the plate. Can't make it home. He's gone. You have to love great defense. I mean, that's an unbelievable effort right there and a way to pick your team up in a critical situation. And it gets the fans into the game, too. I think fans love D. Larish at the plate. He has one hit, 12 at bats. Not much lifetime against the White Sox. Two out, space is empty. And here's the first one. And it goes foul. Foul straight back. One two from Jenks. Still one and two. Well, even though he got ahead in the count here, one and two very quickly, you know he's in for a battle because this guy will shorten up just to You're put out. it in play. The pitcher has to be at the top of his game, even when he's ahead in the count, to get this guy out. Fans going home unhappy in this one. Their offense just did not get it done as the opposing pitching just shut them down. Wow. Now we're going to award the Pepsi Clutch performer. You know, a lot of times you get a multi-hit game, you think you had a great day, but it's when you get those two hits that absolutely matter. And this guy got him when this team needed him the most. Getting on base, setting the table, scoring runs. That's why he's our Pepsi Clutch performer. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports crew. We'll see you soon.